The countdown to Christmas is on, and a very traditional gift that's given and received the world over is always perfume. Well, today we're looking at a very non-traditional way in which this product is being made. I'm joined now by David Apel, who is sniffing out new opportunities for AI to be involved in the process. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's nice to be here. Now, I have to ask, I mean, you are a perfumer. It's all about a very physical thing, your nose smelling, like getting your nose into it. We're going to use a lot of these sniffing puns. Yeah, absolutely. There are many to play with. Yeah. <laughs> um, at what point were you uh, drawn into the idea of using something as, it seems, opposite as AI? Very recently. I mean, the whole AI uh, explosion has been in the past several years, um, but we had a really unique opportunity uh, pairing up with IBM. About two years ago, we began this process at Simrise. And um, the opportunity really just exploded, and we had a, a really practical application, um, which launched the whole, uh, the whole program at a lot faster pace. And that was with one of our largest clients in uh, LATAM, in Latin America, mm -hmm. a Brazilian company called O Boticario, and uh, fifth largest uh, consumer goods product company in the world. And they came to IBM and us for a collaborative uh, process to create the first fragrance created entirely by AI. And that's where it started. OK, but how about you personally? How about Simrise? How about you? And, yeah, and me personally, this this has been about a year, um, a ah, little okay. more than a year of my own um, and when somebody involvement. Came, when, when they came to you to yeah. with this idea, was it like what? Or uh, for me, I've you know I've always been a sort of dabbler in a lot of different aspects of perfumery. I, I teach a perfumery course in uh, in New York, and one of the things about the history of perfumery is that there are very few innovations over its very long history. Mm. So. When you have one, you want to jump on it, yeah. you know, and, and so the it's last, exciting yeah, when, when it's, it's really a moment where, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of explosion and creativity and a lot of opportunity and finding new ways to create fragrances, ways that haven't been approached before. I mean, as a perfumer, that's your goal is to create mm -hmm. something that has not been done before. Every perfumer wants that sort of mm -hmm. holy grail of that, you know, thing that no one's ever smelled before that you suddenly fall in love with. Um, and this is an opportunity to do that, another avenue to, to explore. And how does AI help you this? Because from what I understand, a per one perfume could include up to 100 different yeah, absolutely. elements, I guess. Yeah, the, the raw materials that we use to create fragrances, um, you can use, yeah, 100, even sometimes more. Huh. On average, less than that. But it all depends on the quote unquote recipe, the formula itself, and what you're trying to achieve in it. And sometimes it takes a lot, and sometimes it takes a little. Okay. Um, what AI does, in essence, for us, for other you know, applications of AI, I really can't speak. <laughs> I'm not a very technical person myself, but in the application that we developed, um, what really happens is it enables me as a perfumer to discover in an archive of 1.7 million formulas that we base the research on, okay. what we would call white space. A unique combination of things that have not been tried before in 1.7 million tries. Okay. That's pretty rare space. And so to be able to find that space and create a fragrance around that really interesting concept is unique. But you, as a perfumer, as yeah. a master perfumer in your case, um, you do not, you're not out of the game at all. No, I mean, I'm you have to actually <laughs> <laughs> approve what the system comes up with, which is named Filira, by the way, right? Filiris. Oh, yeah. Sorry. There's, a, there's an S at the end that you pronounce, but you don't see. I don't know. Don't ask me. It's okay, an ancient like, Macedonian name. Uh, so, okay. <laughs> Filiris, then, yes, exactly. um, that, which is what you've called the AI, yes. the AI system. She has to get your approval somehow. Yeah, well, it, she's an amazing partner is really what it works out to be. Um, she's tireless. Um, I can point her in a direction, or mm -hmm. my colleagues can point in a direction of creativity. Um, and once we've pinpointed a little bit of an idea, um, she creates literally thousands of ideas and weeds through them to find ones that are unique. Mm -hmm. And then I interpret those. I can look at it in the way that okay. someone who's a, a great musician can read music. I cannot, but I can read perfume. So I can look at the formula and I can understand what it's going to smell like. And then we get the opportunity to produce that, smell it, and, and uh, work from there. So Because, of course, <laughs> Filiris? Yes. Filiris? Filiris. Filiris. Can't smell. Yeah. Can't smell. Not yet. You know, we're hoping that doesn't happen for a while in the perfumery world. but. Um, but she can create, and that part I can interpret, and then I mm -hmm. play with that. And it gives me avenues of exploration that are just mm -hmm. rich. So for me, I, I embrace it fully. 
And as you've gone out with this idea, of course, this, uh, these perfumes with your Brazilian company are coming out to market. They haven't yes. hit market yet. But um, how, how, what kind of reception are you getting Like when, when you say this? Do you find that people have to be convinced? Like every innovation, there's a lot of sort resistance. of holdovers and resistance. Yeah. In the world of perfumery, and I, I related this story earlier, that um, I remember as a young perfumer spending weeks trying to find exactly the right pen so I could write my formulas on the right paper so it would look beautiful because it was believed that that was a part of the creative process too, the thought process of transferring it to pen and paper. Once you move to a sort of computerized system, there's a lot less charm in pecking away at a formula. But, you know, innovation happens and there's there's always a little reluctance for it. The last great innovation was in the late 1800s when synthetic molecules were first introduced in perfume, which were centuries before only natural. That innovation had a lot of sort of stalwarts too, people who didn't want to embrace these new synthetic molecules. But that's the last innovation and it's lasted for a couple of hundred years. This is the next. So to be a part of the sort of cutting edge of innovation is a really exciting moment in perfumery. I can hear that. I could just, uh, I just think my, my, my feeling is that perfume is something also so, like you said, so visual and, yes. and, and it's associated with beauty and creativity and the idea of these people sitting down and you guys, you know, putting together the right yeah. things. Do you think that this uh, AI, the, the association with AI takes away from that? Not at all. I mean, I still have a lab uh, in my laboratory or beautiful raw materials. It's how I fell in love with perfumery in the first place was the raw materials of creation, right? The things that we're using to make these perfumes are beautiful. They're still that for me. Um, for me, I equate it to uh, the greatest chefs in the greatest kitchens. You've got, you know, fire here and a sous vide over there. It's another tool to create a great recipe, a great formula, something that's really beautiful and aesthetic and pleasing. It's just an aid for me. Um, that's all it is. I still get to be the creator. I still get to direct. So in the end, I mean, this is not your lab. This is a lab at the right. IBM Research Center in Zurich. But That's right. um, you work in a place <laughs> similar to this. Very, yes. Still is. A little smellier than this. But <laughs> <laughs> a, lot of, uh, a lot of beautiful materials, a lot of com complicated uh, things. But it's very similar to this environment, yeah. All right, so let's see the goods. Where it is, you've ah, got some I've got samples them. for my us little, to smell. Of, I'll um, do my little hidden of, reveal of, here. These are, oh. So these are the two fragrances that were created for Au Bois de Cario. Okay. Uh, they'll launch next year. Okay. Um, and I by will. millennials, is that correct? Or yeah, for the millennial so market? We, we had a specific um, target market, and that was millennial, uh, millennial men and women in Brazil. The system, Filaris, uh, targeted that, uh, that small grouping and created fragrances around those themes. We presented these fragrances, two, two uh, examples of um, what Filaris came up with to Obote Cario in collaboration with IBM, uh, which was unique for us, you know, to present in that way. And there was basically a, a, a roaring standing ovation for us. Um, but then they were further verified by the market. Um, they did uh, studies on the market mm -hmm. tests uh, in Brazil, and they beat all the benchmarks. Mm -hmm. So we call this our proof of concept, and uh, we're very proud of the creations. I will give I'll you a little. I'll have to wait to see what the French say. <laughs> <laughs> that will be the ultimate test, right? <laughs> the French are always the ultimate test. Yes. <laughs> so the, right. the thing that was unique about the fragrances, and I'll give you them one at a time. Okay is that, if you just take that and have a little sniff, mm. Filaris created a formula that I recognize to be, in this particular case, the theme is a classic fougere. Fougere is a French word for fern. fern. It's a fern, yes. Okay. And there are certain elements that have to exist in the formula to be considered that type of fragrance. So when we looked at that, it looked ideally as a fougere, mm -hmm. and yet with a huge amount of innovation. And the innovation was something that we can guarantee has never occurred before, mm. because in those 1.7 million formulas, it had never been done. And that's where we have the unique opportunity to find what we call white space, something that hasn't occurred in the past. Mm -hmm. And it's this really unique combination in the back of the fougere note that has very interesting spice ideas of fenugreek and cardamom, um, and a milky note that came from one of the other applications in Simrise's flavors. It brought in this sort of milky, creamy element okay. as well. So, so things that maybe you would not have Things I would of not have thought of on my own, yeah, for sure. Yeah. The second formulation is mm, much more... It's more manly. It's, yeah, it's yeah? much more of a kind of, uh, you know... Well, the second one is actually the feminine one. Really? Yeah. Oh, but dear, maybe I'm not your right. But they're marketed towards <laughs> the, the right unisex. <laughs> Let me be sure I give you the right... No? You're right. I dipped them in a reverse order, so... 
Yeah, this is the more. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, this okay. is the more fruity floral okay. one. Um, yes, but this it is also more fruity used, floral. That's exactly. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> Talking about the um, the fact that the second one mm -hmm. um, really has a, a unique combination of raw materials as well, using high quality and high quantities of osmanthus absolute, a very very rare, very rich. Uh, natural floral extract from China mm -hmm. in a dosage that I've never seen before in the 38 years that I've been a perfumer um, and using that in unique combination as well. So the, the great opportunity that we have in these creations and in all the future creations with Filaris is to create formulas with a unique profile and that's the most exciting part of the process for us. And are your colleagues getting on board in the perfume world? Slowly but surely. Uh, okay. There is a sort of select group of perfumers who have been part of the process of training Filaris and really getting the, the feedback correct. Um, mm -hmm. And we're all very, very excited about it. And we are, in, in fact, internal ambassadors for the program itself. It'll be part of our training program for young perfumers in the future. We're going to introduce that in the, w within the next 18 months. And um, it'll be just a standard part of the tools that we have at our uh, disposal. So. All right, well, thank you very much for, your, for sharing your story with us thank today. Thank you. Pleasure really to talk to you. really appreciate it. And now I will look forward to speaking to your colleague from IBM Research to figure out right. how they helped you along your way. He'll life. tell you the nuts and bolts of how it works. So, all right. My pleasure. Thank, thank you. Thank you. All right, so just how Dave was saying, we are now going to talk some nuts and bolts with Richard Goodwin, who is the principal researcher on this project for IBM. Yep. Correct? Pleasure to be here. <laughs> thank you. So tell me, uh, in terms of... What came first, uh, IBM or Simrise? How did you guys come to this collaboration? Well, we, at IBM, we've been looking at creativity for a while. We started more in the food area, uh, but then fragrance was a natural extension, and we started talking- Of the food area. Of the food area. Fragrance was a natural extension of the food area. OK, oh, I'm yeah, laughing because-, because <laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, so taste is actually 80 or 90% smell. Mm -hmm. And so creating a dish that tastes good and smells good uh, is sort of on the way towards creating great okay, fragrances. Okay, so yes, a natural step, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, I'm not exactly sure how the two teams got first introduced, but after the introduction, then we decided it would actually make sense to move forward with the project to see if we could actually uh, use some of our creativity work in AI and apply it to fragrance. And we were lucky to partner with Simrise and, and Dave to actually begin this adventure. So tell me about Phileris. So Phileris actually is kind of like a, an apprentice in a sense. So a human apprentice learns from the master perfumers how to create fragrances, how to balance the various materials, how to structure them so that they'll actually work in an application like shampoo or conditioner. Um, so the system actually learns from all of the master perfumers at Simrise. It looks at the 1.7 million formulas they've all created. Unlike a human, it can actually analyze all of those formulas to figure out the patterns of what works and what works better and how to create various things and kind of take bits and elements from all the different perfumers and mix them in unique combinations mm -hmm. and then try to predict whether they're going to work as a fragrance, whether people are going to like them and things. But then like a person, it can't actually smell them. So it doesn't really know what they smell like. It can just predict that they're likely to be pleasant to people. So they cut out some of the work, actually, for the perfumers, or? Well, it actually really sort of triggers different ideas. So it can help explore a much larger space, allow people to uh, try things that they may not have thought of, because we all have our own styles. You know, there's 1,300 different ingredients that perfumers can use, uh, but they probably have a couple hundred of their favorites that they tend to use most of the time. And the system can look at fragrance formulas and say, oh, this other ingredient you've never tried before, I think would work really well in this kind of a fragrance, and sort of give them well thought out new ideas that hopefully will help them create better fragrances more quickly. And is this like a, this is a system that, that did you say this earlier, that's learning? It learns. It's all various kinds of machine learning algorithms to learn to predict whether a fragrance will work in a shampoo or a conditioner or a fine fragrance. Also learn to predict whether people will like it. Also learn preferences for different markets, you know, you know, uh, millennials in Brazil versus, you know, people in, in the Mideast or other places because they're different uh, preferences that different markets have. And is this the kind of technology that could be applied to other um 
other sort of uh, sniffing intensive uh, yes. jobs like I don't know like coffee or, or, or wines or I don't yeah know. so we we're, we're we're looking at doing things like wine blending or whiskey blending okay uh, to try to create like you've got all these different like great varietals how can we combine them in a way that's going to give us the most pleasing red wine uh, but then for us, there's also different industrial applications. It turns mm -hmm. out things like that, that don't sound as, as, as sexy. Yeah, I was going to say as sexy. <laughs> you can say it. <laughs> but, um, so like actually adhesives. So, um, oh, that isn't very sexy. <laughs> no, sorry. But, but it turns out like, you know, uh, companies that are putting together airplanes need to glue or, or your smartphone where you put the uh, glass gets glued to the things. All these companies are continually coming up with new products that need adhesives to put them together. And so can we come up with new and innovative adhesive, which are combinations of materials just like a fragrance, mm -hmm. and actually you know, produce adhesives that perform well and are cost effective. And is this your feeling that um, as we move forward, there, we are just gonna have more and more artificial intelligence involved in all of these kinds of processes, not only the one you're working on, but? Yeah, that's like, so all these processes. There's no turning back, in other words. There's no turning back, and what's really fueling this is two things. One is the available data. So if they didn't have the 1.7 million formulas for us to learn from, you know, we wouldn't be able to get started. But then we're also getting you know, new algorithms and faster computers that can help us deal with those large you know, data volumes. And so it's kind of a, a happy coincidence of all these things coming together mm -hmm. that actually allows us to make a lot more progress now than we used to be able to. And at the end of the day, you are saving companies money? We're saving companies money, but hopefully actually, more importantly, maybe creating better products. Mm -hmm. So more innovative things, because as they've said, they've been doing perfumery for, well, millennial, the last couple hundred years using more synthetic stuff but you know eventually you you going to run out of ideas and so this is hopefully something to help keep you know the idea stream flowing and people coming up with newer and better things okay thank you so much Richard for your insights well thank you very much